Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. We're going to continue with our 3D Blender logo tutorial and if you remember in our last um, tutorial we were working on version 5 and in version 5 we did the final render and here you can see that was taking some time so I'll stop that video and you can see here I've rendered out all 110 frames so that took quite a long time, it took about half an hour to do that and we can pick a frame for example this one here we can see what it looks like and at the moment there's single, still single frames and we want to animate this into a final video so we're going to do that in Blender as well, Blender has some tools to allow us to sequence this video into a final video Se sequence these frames into a final video let's say so what we'll do is we're going to first of all um, in your directory you should create a folder called video because that's where we're going to store the video itself and we're going to open up version 5 that's the last one we worked on and we're going to file save as and call this version 6 and we can just shrink this window down a little bit here and make the viewport a bit bigger here and we're going to select the video sequence editor and we're going to go to add and we're going to add image and we're going to go to our final render folder where we can see all 110 frames and with our mouse we're going to select all 110 frames make sure you select all of them and click add image strip and we see the video in here now and we need to do some settings here so we're going to scroll down and in the output we're going to click this directory and we're going to go back one directory here we'll click this up upward sort of arrow here and we're going to go to the video directory that we just created and we're going to, we can leave it as logo that's fine we're going to accept this and then we're going to scroll down here and in the output settings we're not going to select PNG we're going to select H.264 which is HD resolution so we select that and in the encoding the presets will select H.264 as well and that's pretty much all we've got to do now we're going to click the animation button here and it's going to take each video, uh, sorry, each frame, and it's going to convert it into a final video sequence. So if we go to the video folder, we can see it's making the file here right now. So it's only a few kilobytes in file size, but that will increase to you know a few megabytes once it's finished. That's going to take some time, so uh, we have to be a bit patient. We can just see the progress here. It's on frame 11 and it needs to do 110 frames in total but let's um, let me just explain why we in theory what we could have done is we could have um, skipped the last process we didn't have to exactly render out each frame separate as a separate image we could have just created this video straight away by using these settings here we didn't have to create the PNG file sequence but there's a good reason to do the PNG file sequence um, later on when you get a bit more understanding of video editing and video manipulation so let's say if in these final renders this is the actual images that we looked at I'm just going to copy one to my desktop just copy one here and because we've got the, the individual frames we can work on these frames now we can take them into other bits of software and we can add other effects or we could take it into Photoshop each one of these frames we could batch process them it's called batch processes we could, we could run a script or some tools against these each individual frame and change some of the effects inside of these or we could add effects to each frame separately so just as a quick example while we're waiting for that video to sequence if I were to open up uh, GIMP editing software I've done a tutorial on this you can find it on my YouTube uh, about GIMP and if I drag and drop this image into here this will just be one frame and we could use GIMP to do a batch process on every single frame and we could set it up to do things like um, we could add so, like a soft glow for example so if I click on soft glow and if I increase the radius and the brightness 
if you see like around here where we can see the, the, the light shining if I click OK now you can see it's added a glow around those sort of those specific edges so you can add other effects and it's done it to pretty much all the objects so you can use GIMP and edit each frame not separately you would batch process them in one go there's, you know, there's ways of doing that uh, and you can add extra effects which you can't really do in Blender so the Blender you can do loads of things with it but certain things you can't do and vice versa there's certain things in GIMP that you can't really do which you can do in Blender so that's why we created each frame separately so we can manipulate them um, using other bits of software rather than just creating the video at the end straight away so you can play around with these filters uh, you should really learn about GIMP a bit more especially batch processing if you want to do because you don't want to add these filters to every single frame you've got 110 of them so it will take you a long time to do that but you can batch process them all in one go um, and add these effects to them so just wanted to explain why we created separate still frames um, before we created the final video sequence itself so let's close down GIMP, we don't really need this anymore and that was frame 21, let's just make sure that's still, that's, that frame's still in there so that's fine, we can delete this, we don't need this and let's see where, where we are in this sequence so we're in about frame 70 so it's going to take maybe a, maybe a couple more minutes for it to do the full render but we'll just wait for that and then we can see the final video playing frame by frame in, in the actual video sequence itself rather than as still frames so it'll take a little bit of time um, you know if you've got some free time you want to learn more about Blender then there's loads more tutorials on YouTube you can go and check out I've, I've learned quite a lot from YouTube myself so do go and have a look at YouTube and type in Blender tutorials and you'll find lots and lots of tutorials some of them very complicated and very complex some of them very simple but you can really do some pretty amazing stuff with with uh, with Blender once you get up to speed with it and this was really a beginners tutorial just to get you kick started so please go and have a look at YouTube and find some more great tutorials there you can also check out Blender's website where you'll find a lot of information about Blender and how to use it and there's a manual as well so you can go on to uh, Blender's website and download the manual it's quite techy but uh, you can get a lot of useful information from there I read a, read a bit of that manual as well and I found some useful information in there as well so we're not that far away from finishing we've, we've already got 15 more frames to go through so we'll just wait for that to happen you can see the progress bar up here how much is left to do and you can also see it's on frame 99 of 110 so just 10 more frames to go Okay, we're pretty much done. That's all frames done. So let's save this. We can close down Blender. We're pretty much done with Blender now. And we can open up our directory and here's our video. And we can play the video. And you can see the final result. So I'll let that play through a few times. And this could be like a little video intro before you have your you know your main your main video if you check my YouTube videos I have this little intro before I do my tutorial it just makes it look a bit nice and uh, you know it doesn't hurt so I know that was quite a long tutorial but you should have learned quite a lot from this and um, hopefully find it useful and it will give you uh, at least a kickstart on how to use Blender with the particle system and animating the camera adding in objects creating text lighting effects uh, even using the node editor to add, to add the, this uh, glare to the text and the objects and you know we've got this, uh, this sort of shiny surface on the floor so it's looking pretty good so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and 
I look forward to seeing you on the next one.